International Racing Driver of the Year. The nominations, we've got Fernando Alonso, second in the championship, but not, as he pointed out, in the second fastest car. Another fine season for Alonso. Scott Dixon took his third IndyCar title with a great fight back in the second half of the season. Lewis Hamilton, a season that had its frustrations, but his reputation is as strong as ever. Jimmy Johnson getting close to legendary status now as he takes NASCAR title number six. Kimi Raikkonen started the year with victory in Australia and scored and performed consistently after that. And Sebastian Vettel, records tumbling as he makes it world title number four. So Sterling, can you manage the envelope? I'm not sure you need to open it, actually. <laughs> no money in it. <laughs> the International Racing Driver of the Year is, as you probably all guess, Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian Vettel. Wow, here we are again. Uh, at the end of another astonishing season. And when you come down those stairs. Each year you come down the stairs and you do us the honor of arriving here as world champion. Your reputation is that little bit more enhanced. Your status in the sport is that bit more enhanced. You see great champions like Sterling, Jackie Stewart, Emerson Fittipaldi, Nicky Lauder and so on. Is it a humbling experience still for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, tonight I was second walking down the stairs behind uh, another Sebastian. Another Sebastian. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, still... Uh, uh, very special for me, uh, definitely, uh, especially because, especially because, uh, yeah, the room is full of uh, people knowing motorsport very well, and um, to get, you know, the respect from from all of you is uh, is, is is fantastic, and uh, it's been four years now. I've been walking down those stairs. Uh, I wouldn't mind another couple of years. Uh, well, we wouldn't mind yeah, either in some ways. I know how much you know uh, how much work there is uh, yeah. to achieve that, and. Uh, big team behind, uh, a lot of the people are here as well tonight, so um, yeah, I get to pick this nice trophy up every <laughs> year, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of work, as I said. Just take a moment, Sterling, give us your verdict, how great a champion uh, has this man become? Well, I think he's fantastic, I mean, I spent 15 years trying, and I got nowhere near him, he's already got four, it's not very fair, <laughs> and I, I think, I'm absolutely staggering, I mean, what really amazes me, uh, as much as anything, really, is that if suddenly a car, there's a car brought out to slow them down, when the car pulls in, who's first away? He's straight there. Yeah. Every time he seems to be you know, right on the ball, bang. And I really respect you. I think it's incredible. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. On that slowing down lap, we listen to the radio again, and that's always revealing the emotions that you show. Uh, I think just to get one thing straight, I think Sterling, uh, maybe I to speak in a German language. Maybe I have conquered <laughs> more, more championships, but he, I think he definitely conquered and broke more women, women's hearts, so. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's had about four lifetime achievement awards as a result of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> For the women, yeah. But that is important. I mean, it's important to you to still have fun in the sport. It's difficult to have fun in Formula One these yeah, days. Yeah, I think uh, the difference obviously is that uh, it's much easier these days to get caught, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that with confidence because my girlfriend is not here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I was told that all the bad things get cut out, so yeah. it's between, it's very private, it's between us. It has been in the past, but we, we, have, we have different kind of communications out there uh, tonight. But anyway, the, the, the slowing down lap and the emotions that you showed, you said to your team, you know, mate, enjoy this because it's not going to last forever. Um, I mean, are you in dread of what's to come at the moment when, when the sort of bubble bursts? It, it seems a long way off. Um, no, it's, I think it's more to, to, to... I think that there's always the threat that if you have such a run that we, we had... Um, you get used to it, you know, you, you, and you get the kind of the, the expectation yourself as well, where, um, yeah, you're second, third, or fourth on the grid, or you finish uh, the race uh, not first, and uh, it's, it's a dis disappointment, but it shouldn't be. I think it depends, every, every time it depends on the race, and uh, I think Nikki was on the stage earlier. Obviously, you've got a great example of Sterling up here. Um, Finishing second doesn't doesn't mean that you know you, you had a bad race. It depends how the race unfolded, etc. And uh, 
you can still be very proud with the second, with the third, it's still a podium finish, or with the fifth, um, you know, given what you get out on the day. Um, so that's why I think it's even more special to, yeah, appreciate um, the run that we had, and uh, I think everybody in the team did, uh, but you never, that's what I tried to express, you never know how long, yeah. how long it lasts. What exactly... Uh, What is that, exactly is the donut bill at the moment and what's it likely to rise to over the next five or six years? The breach was not to do the donuts, it was not to bring the car back to yeah. Park Ferme. So, uh, it's a stupid rule, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're they're expensive really donuts, but uh, the races after, obviously, we had reason to do more donuts and uh, every time we brought the car back, so no fine. What exactly happened mid-season? We got, we got to Hungary and, and, and Lewis had that great win in Hungary and everyone said, right, you know, the battle is on for the yeah. rest of the World Championship season. There was a bit of a break, back you came with a different mindset or, you know, what had changed? Um, I don't know, I got a big wake-up call in Hungary. Uh, I thought I did, you know, a decent job on the, on the Saturday. Um, Paul was a very, very close fight. The pole po position was a close fight with Lewis. It was, on, I think, five or six hundreds and... Uh, yeah, I was happy with my lap in, in the final attempt in Q3, but I knew that pole was obviously um, for grasp, um, so I was not entirely happy. I got back to my room, uh, got changed, and uh, when I was in my underpants, Helmut Marko opened the door. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought the same. And uh, <laughs> he said, Ah, oh, you f that one right up. <laughs> I said, uh, what, what exactly do you mean? And he said, uh, yeah, turn five, I've seen it. You lost more than 500. So if you only copy the lap from Q2 in turn five, you will have pole. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you know, what most people don't see, obviously this year has been a, a tricky year in some, uh, well, you know. And uh, <laughs> people always think that, you know, Helmut and me, we're like, you know, best mates. And uh, actually, the example that I'm just giving, giving you uh, proves pretty much the opposite. I think he was never shy of giving me shit and probably never will be. <laughs> <laughs> so he came to my room, gave me a massive, uh, yeah, uh, bollocking for f***ing it up and not getting pole position. <laughs> and I said to him, Helmut, yeah, turn five, you got a point. Obviously, he spoke to the engineers and uh, he was uh, yeah, well informed. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an awful lap. And uh, yeah, still, you should have got pole. Next day, um, yeah, we finished third, which I think was a good recovery for the race we had, getting stuck uh, in traffic and so on. Anyways, uh, so you see, yesterday you get pole, you win the race. You didn't get pole, you f***ed it up, and today you saw you had a race. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the summary. Yes. So uh, <laughs> Maybe that got me thinking a little bit, um, and uh, I tried to yeah, make it a little bit better after the summer break. <laughs> From that point on, you said, I'll show you. Yeah, I'm, yeah, and what a demonstration through the, through the rest of the season. How is that going to now carry on into 2014? What are your thoughts on 2014 and well, what lies uh, in store? Do you know? It's, uh, like Adrian summed it up, I think it's very difficult to, to know. Um, it's, uh, I think every team and every engine manufacturer probably has an idea uh, how it should uh, turn out. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a surprise at this stage. So. Um, we wait, and obviously, until next year. I think uh, getting the cars on the track for the first time will be um, very interesting. And then uh, we'll see how many engines blow up or not. Um, yeah, personally, I'm a bit sad because first test I did in Formula One was uh, in a V10. Um, I was uh, very close to, yeah, wet my seat. Uh, <laughs> Not because my enormous, enormous testicles, that's for you know, guys on, on two wheels. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember that test and then obviously went to V8 the year after and uh, when I had the second go in a Formula One car, uh, I could tell the difference. And I just hope that we are not going down from a, from a power point of view. The refs, we lose the refs, which I think is a shame because yeah, obviously it's a direction, new direction to go into and uh, new technology, but um, I still remember the first time I went watching. I don't. I'm sorry if I'm talking too much. No, go on, go on. You, you're on a tight schedule. So. No, the, the, the light's gone green again. We're ah, okay. fine. You know, they... um, is that how it works? Now it's red. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's gone red again. They, you're Wind talking. It up, yeah. It's they, nice green. You can. Anyways. 
<laughs> first time I went to see Formula One was uh, in 1992. Uh, it was raining, it was only a free practice uh, in Hockenheim. Um, and cars were only coming out for installation laps. I didn't know that, my, my father didn't know, but uh, just to hear the sound, you know, and to feel it in the ground, the car coming, that's, you know, the first memories I have. And I just hope in the future we'll not lose this excitement. I think the cars need to smell, the cars need to be loud, and uh, yeah, it needs to give you something that you don't forget. Um, maybe I'm not very economic right now, but uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Deep think, down, you're as old-fashioned as the rest of us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all yeah. sound and fury. But the fact that there is uncertainty about next year, does that excite you, the, the, the thought that the challenge is going to be slightly different? Um, yeah, it is. It's a new challenge. But then again, it is every year. I think uh, if you look at the last couple of years, yes, you can say that the regulation's been fairly consistent, but there have been new, new challenges for the whole team, for the drivers to adapt to the cars, um, to learn and understand them. So I think in that regard, every car is a new car. Uh, for sure, next year with a new engine, etc., coming in, uh, will be a bigger step. Uh, a lot of new things to understand. So yeah, it's uh, difficult to know what's what's coming. But um, I think everyone is also looking forward to it, and I think that's the same approach. Same approach for us. Yes, we had a very very strong base um, the last couple of years. But um, I remember Adrian saying in the India that. Yeah, 2009 wasn't a bad start, and uh, it was uh, starting off in a, in a good direction uh, with the generation of cars we had, but I'm sure that you know, we've got lots of clever people on board. I will certainly try my best on track to I'm keep sure it going. You will. Despite the uncertainty of next year, it will surprise no one in this room if you're heading down that staircase once again uh, come the first Sunday in December next year. Fantastic champion, four times world champion now, four times for Formula One world champion, Sebastian Vettel. And to Sterling Moss.